Well, let's take a closer look at why we're focusing on the business of cannabis and why now. Cannabis, marijuana, weed. Whatever name it goes by, the global rise of a once outlawed plant is making a lot of people rich. From joints to edibles to rapidly expanding sales of CBD-infused creams, lotions, and even beers, the global cannabis industry grew to an estimated $344 billion in 2018, eclipsing the global wine market. So who's leading the growth of the new cash crop? Currently, the world's leading cannabis companies are based in Canada, which became the first G7 nation to fully legalize recreational and medical cannabis use in 2018. That paved the way for multi-billion dollar companies like Edmonton-based Aurora or Ontario-based Canopy Growth to get a jump start on building networks and boosting cultivation. But those firms didn't reach multi-billion dollar valuations by limiting themselves to selling in Canada, and now they're aiming further south. To the United States, which has quickly become the world's hottest cannabis market, 10 times as large as Canada's. As more Americans have come to support legalization, states have rolled back regulations. Colorado and Washington became the first U.S. states to legalize recreational marijuana back in 2012, followed by Alaska and Oregon in 2014. Now, in all 10 states have legalized recreational marijuana, while 33 allow for medical use. That has set the legal U.S. cannabis market up to hit $23 billion by 2025. But with marijuana still illegal in the U.S. on a federal level, concerns remain over what regulations could do to hurt the rapidly growing industry. And with cannabis prices per gram falling as supply becomes more readily available, questions still remain about whether cannabis companies will ever live up to their high-flying valuations. So who's best positioned to win? What fortunes are up for grabs as new markets are cornered? And is it worth the risk to jump in as new deals come together? All to be answered right now in Yahoo Finance's The Business of Cannabis. Well, if you're looking for evidence that an industry has established itself, take a look at the companies that have evolved to support it. John Kajia is a data analyst from New Frontier Data. The firm specializes in providing research to the cannabis industry. And Olivia Mannix, she's founder and CEO of Cannabrand, a marketing firm dedicated to serving cannabis manufacturers and brands. Welcome, guys. Thank Thanks you so much. much for having us. Yeah, so John, I want to start with you. You're a firm specializes in providing analytics, right, to the industry. So who exactly is buying cannabis? What does the industry look like in that consumer in 2019? So one of the things our data is telling us is this is a much more substantial industry and a much greater opportunity than I think many people have realized. We know that one in 10 Americans consume cannabis regularly. Globally, there are over 260 million cannabis consumers who consume semi-regularly. Collectively, they're spending nearly $350 billion already today. So when we look at the global legal market, which is less than $20 billion, we barely scratch the tip of this iceberg of the total potential market that this industry could grow to. Okay, and your firm has put forward some cannabis archetypes trying to describe what these consumers look like today, and they're kind of surprising. Tell me about that. So we, were, we, we always felt that the binary between a medical and recreational consumer was just wholly inadequate in describing the diversity of cannabis consumers in the market. So based on a study that we did last year, which was the most comprehensive segmentation of, of cannabis consumers ever been done, we've identified nine distinct archetypes of cannabis consumers that go beyond whether they're using it medically or recreationally. Who are the two biggest? The two biggest are the traditional lifestylers and the medical and the, and the modern lifestylers. Traditional lifestylers would be your um, joint and pipe um, consumers. They smoke flower products mainly. Um, they're very heavy consumers or very regular consumers of an integrated cannabis uh, into their life broadly. Now, Olivia, these are the consumers that you are targeting. You're being hired yes. by these cannabis yes. firms, big brands. What are you creating for them? So we're doing everything from brand strategy to creating brand messaging to a go-to-market strategy. So really coming up with all of the creative surrounding cannabis and the different products that they offer. So tell me about the consumers you're targeting. Who are they? So they're, I mean, really everyone over the age of 21 and then also within the medical sector, children who need cannabis for um, anything from epilepsy to diseases and things that a lot of pharmaceutical companies have been uh, commoditizing right now. Okay, and yeah. what about women and LGBTQ communities? Yeah, so it's women are definitely, well, right? yeah, absolutely. So women are definitely a very large target audience as well. Um, there's, you know, the LGBT community, there's um, seniors, so there's really We're all seeing of, some all of your ads place. here. So you said okay. seniors, this one is right. for women. Yeah, so this is one by Dixie Brands, um, 
for their Synergy line, and they have um, product offerings that range from topicals to edibles to um, vape pens. So it's really interesting to see, you know, how many different products that there are and who uses them. And why seniors? Um, seniors need cannabis to help them with arthritis, with pain, with um, Alzheimer's, with a, you know different ailments. So it's really a, a great you know product to help them you know, versus pharmaceuticals. Or so. We're not seeing any cannabis in some of these ads. Why not? All right. So here's one um, Pebble. They're a um, actually a CBD company, which is a hemp derived uh, CBD, and they actually help companies with. Um, getting products to children, so like helping them with epilepsy, autism is a huge one. Um, they've done a really great job at informing and educating parents regarding different types of um, things that they could use. Looks a little bit like a pharma ad, no? I mean, a little bit, but I mean, it is, you know, we're marketing to everyone, really, so it's not, it's really not going to be that different, and they're also, the products have same effects, so it's, it's better at the end of the day. John, now let's talk about briefly the size of this market. Your firm has estimates going up to 2020. What's the size of the market today for cannabis users and consumers, and what do you project? So for the U.S. legal market, uh, we're anticipating that this year we'll see uh, just over $13 billion in revenue. By 2025, that will have grown to over $26 billion. And that's just based on the states where it's currently legal. I see. Um, the potential opportunity, once you start adding in uh, Illinois, which will be legal by January 20, uh, 2020, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, the list gets very long. The big market, populations big too, population right? Big population states. Uh, and so the total potential opportunity is going to be well beyond uh, the 26 billion once these states start passing those, their legalization measures. John Kajia and Olivia Mannix, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. Thank you.